Hi everybody. Good morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever you happen to be watching me from. My name is Sally Roper and I'm coming to you from Ocho Rios in Jamaica. And I have for you yet another kiln opening. This one is going to be a little bit different for me because I'm using my dark clay in a lot of the pieces and that is Laguna 391. And it fires to a, hmm, like a very dark brown black clay. And I have used various uh, glazes on them to really understand the best combinations that I can use with this clay. I really love the clay and I'm really unhappy with the results that I've gotten in the past. And um, anyway, if you excuse me for one minute because I just want to get one piece out of my studio and then, because uh, I need to compare it to something that's in the kiln, so give me a sec. Okay, I'm back. All right, thank you and thank you for your patience. Anyway, I do have some uh, Laguna B mix clay uh, pieces that are in, in my kiln today. And uh, a couple of them are commissioned pieces. And, um, but really most of the 391 is just for my, my stock. Um, I sell my work at trade shows. I don't do Etsy or um, or uh, anything like that because for me to have to ship things to the United States or to Canada or wherever you are the, if you want to purchase my pieces it's just not worth it. it it's just so expensive and the only thing I could do is maybe wait until the time I go up to the United States and carry it up and ship it from there but I'm not going to bother with that anyway the exercise for today is the kiln and um, so I prop the lid and I started the video, I really wanted to do it sight unseen, propped the lid, started um, what I thought was my video and I was actually on screenshot or snapshot. Um, and so anyway, I've closed the lid back down again, realizing now and resetting my camera so that I am on video. So with no further ado, my kiln is uh, currently at about 148 degrees. So I am going to wear my gloves just as a precaution, although I don't know that I'm really going to need them. Um, anyway, like I said, um, this is a, going to be a mixture of opulence glazes, some clay scape, clay scape glazes, um, and whatever. So uh, I'm, I'm really nervous because I really want these pieces to turn out the way I envisioned them but somehow I don't think that's gonna happen. So this might be a really good video to watch because uh, there's going to be a lot of disappointment. Anyway, the first thing I'm gonna do is, um, is show you my, uh, my witness cones. So um, I have fired this at cone five medium with a 12 minute hold. And as you can see, the number five cone is bent all the way over. So uh, what it really needs to do is, um, is reach the, uh, the tip of the base. So where it really needs to do is bend to here. And that would be a perfect cone five. But as you can see, it's bent all the way and is touching the little plate that I've put these on. So I, it, it has gone more than a cone five, but it is not a cone six. This is my cone six, and there's a slight curve to it. So I know that it's, it's a, certainly more than five, but not six. So we'll just say it, it's a, a, a good five and a half. Anyway, the witness cones, what they do is they measure the heat work, even though I have a controller and I can, um, I can preset whatever I want the kiln to go to, but really the witness cones are what tells me the actual efficiency of my kiln. And it is, uh, I have a Scut 1027 and it's just, uh, it works perfectly. I, it, it, I get exactly what I expect. So there you go. All right, so in here, I'm gonna show you some good stuff first. Hmm. So, this is um, a commissioned piece, and this is, uh, as you can see, it's the Laguna B-Mix. And uh, there's my signature on the bottom. 
So commissioned work gets my signature and just ordinary pieces get my stamp. Um, and this is just my lattice cutout work. This piece is, is about nine and a half, ten 10 inches wide by about four and a half, five inches tall. So that came out uh, perfectly. It's exactly as I expected. And I dip my glazes, uh, sorry, I dip my pieces in my glaze uh, primarily. I do have Amico brush on, which I will explain later on and uh, whatever, but the majority of my stuff is dipping. And also, uh, which you've seen in earlier videos, this is um, a trademark piece of mine. It is a, or a, this one is actually about eight inches tall and um, pineapple is a sign of welcome and uh, so I make these and they're really nice so they would go as a pair probably on a dining room table or whatever and you just put a little um, well more than a votive candle probably a three inch candle or the fairy lights inside but you can see there's a lovely pineapple and this is with um, opulence eggshell and you can see the translucency of it. It's a really, it's one of my favorite go-to glazes. And I have lots of pieces in here using it, so. Alrighty, I have my table over here where I'm putting all the pieces as I take them out. So now I'm getting into uh, my 391 clay and I can already see, um, I can already see one really huge disappointment. Um, this, is so this is how dark the clay is it's a really really dark brown almost black clay um and on the outside i used jess jess jessica putnam phillip uh, her black copper and there is a bit of of sparkle to it but you can see some pinholing and i actually saw that when i glazed it and maybe my glaze was too thick i don't really know and i tried rubbing it when it was dry before i fired it um, to hopefully uh, get some glaze into the pinholes and um, it didn't work um, so this is um, uh, disappointment number one on the inside i did uh, opulence tiger's eye it's hard to tell i don't know how to show you but tiger's eye is a very dark brown but it's got lots of gloss it has reacted nicely um, there is no um, pinholing it's a beautiful finish on the inside I just wish I had that more on the outside now when I stepped away I went into my studio and I got a piece and I'm sorry it's a little dirty but I just wanted to show you the difference this is the um, same black copper glaze uh, on a piece that I fired, um, it, it's a it's a working piece because I broke the handle, um, and this is the difference between um, the 390 uh, the 391, which is this one, and the B mix, and you can just see the the um, beautiful metallic glow of the copper uh, color in this glaze. And uh, although I do have a little bit of sheen and metallic sheen on this, it just it, uh, it it got lost and that's a, a disappointment now I only did this on two on two mugs uh, because I was I was testing it and um, and with the um, 391 clay I like to leave a little bit of bare clay on the bottom because it is such a beautiful clay and um, so I, I'm, I'm disappointed that the the copper didn't come out more that it just really got absorbed into the into the blackness of the clay now this is a um a little flower vase and again it's using the black clay and what i did was i just carved a little um a little design on the on the bottom and I filled in the notches with stroke and coat with blue aisle stroke and coat and tuxedo in the uh, what would be I guess the stems and then I waxed it um, using Mark's wax on and I waxed it there and then I dipped this in opulence blue Monday and um, it's come out really interesting it's a little patchy in places I don't know why I gave it a probably a three second dip 
and on the inside it's uh, again I don't know I, it's hard to show you the inside but the inside came out pretty nice um, I like the I like the texture and the feel of how the glaze is it's certainly very different from this one which is very matte and flat um, and this one this one is turned out okay uh, I was hoping the blue would be m more solid but uh, anyway nice piece this is um, probably six inches tall and I made it as a set so this uh, this will go together with another one again um, just carved a little design on the bottom and uh, I filled in the where where the flowers would be or the leaves would be with uh, this is um, limelight limelight um, stroke and coat limelight and then again I waxed over that and then I dipped this piece in opulent sea spray what I do like is although it was not intended is all of the streakiness and all of the a uh, kind of miscolor discoloration but it actually has come out okay and it's um it, it almost looks a little bluish even though the clay it's the oh, okay so it's the same glaze as this if you can believe it and i think it must be the iron in the um in the 391 clay which uh turns my sea spray this and this are the same glaze uh kind of hard to believe but it is uh, fired on the same level in my kiln, all on the top shelf. And this has a partner. Again, it has done pretty much the same thing, so I won't dwell on this. But um, I like the I like the gloss. I like the sheen of it. Um, anyway, this turned out fine. So there's there's the two of them. And if you can imagine this blue one in the middle. So it's gonna, I'm gonna maybe sell them as a set. And um, now, I know I've already had a look at this one. Like I said, I opened up uh, or I started filming and I had only just really done a screenshot. Anyway, again, how my 391 clay. This one I dipped in opulence eggshell, which has gone very, um, uh, instead of being white, this is the same glaze on the inside as this. So uh, it's gone very brown, kind of with a little bit of blue in it. But that inside of this mug and this are done with the same glaze. On the outside, I dipped the whole piece in the eggshell. I have waxed the bottom. So like I said, with this clay, I like to leave a little bit of, the, of, the, of, the, of it showing. And then I did three coats of blue rutile amico i brushed on three coats of blue rutile and then um when all that was dry i dipped the top into same sea spray same as this um so i'm it's come out a very dark blue uh, i'm i'm disappointed i would have thought the blue rutile would show up a little bit better and and it didn't but um anyway it's going to be consistent because here's another one and they've just come, come out really really dark now it's hard um, it's hard for me to show you exactly um, there there is a bit of blue uh, and probably when I take it outside the blue will shine up a little bit more we'll just have to see all right going down into my next level ah oh, there's something that's kind of nice okay so here are some more of the of these ones where I did a the a full dip in the eggshell and then again three coats brushed on of blue rutile and then I dipped the rim in um, in sea spray. So sorry, eggshell on the eggshell on the whole piece, three coats of blue rutile and then dip the rim about one inch into sea spray. So they're not bad. They just didn't come out as I as I looked. Um, I don't know how attractive the inside is. Again, it's hard for me to show it to you. Um, but anyway, I mean that's what people are going to see when they're drinking out of it. Okay, now this is a soup mug, 
And this soup mug is eggshell that threw to the two times seaweed. Okay, so a little bit better. This one is the same process, same eggshell on the inside. You can see the, maybe a little bit better because uh, it's a bigger piece. Um, oh, oh, uh, there, I don't know. I, my lighting, I'm just using um, regular ceiling lights here. So uh, again, the dark clay. I did the three coats of, three heavy coats of blue rutile. And then I did um, two coats of seaweed, uh, Amico seaweed on top of that. And I got, um, uh, I got a nice little bit of run, um, a little bit of uh, color um, there. That can show you a, a little bit. But again, it, it's a lot darker than I had hoped. And there's a, another example there. That can show you, oh, that's showing you a little bit better of how the colors work. But the blue rutile has just gone black, very, very dark. And, um, and you, you can hardly tell there's any blue rutile in there at all. And like I said, two coats of seaweed on the rim. And I did six of them, or five of them. Um, that shows you um, that shows you the run a little bit better. So seaweed is supposed to make the colors run, which it actually did because I only put seaweed on where the where probably the top uh, three quarters of an inch where that little rim is, that little lip. I always do a slight curve on my mugs because that's where it goes on your mouth and it's very pleasing to the lip to have a slight groove. And this is a soup mug. Okay, now this will take a little bit of explanation. So this is um, again the 391 clay and this is my uh, peacock bowl. Now this took six steps. So I did a full dip in the eggshell. So here's a good way to show you this color here and this lamp are the same glaze. And I do know that eggshell comes out blue, uh, bluish, almost robin's egg blue um, on darker clay, on like a buff clay. Um, and then it's come out even bluer on the black clay. But the whole thing was dipped in eggshell. When that dried, I did, um, I, I drew um, some use of flux. Um, I used an applicator bottle uh, and I just did some use all the way around. Um, and then when that started to dry, I got stroke and coat and I have blue aisle and uh, limelight, that's it. Blue aisle and limelight. And what I did is I got a paintbrush. And before I used to just um, squeeze it and make dollops. And this time I used a brush and I just did a, um, a heavy dip and I, um, I brushed on the uh, alternating colors with the blue aisle and limelight. Then what I did was I dipped the whole thing in sea spray, which is again, this color. <laughs> and then I did a second application of the stroke and coat because uh, I didn't want to lose that, that coloring. And then um, blue rutile on the rim and inside. And then what I did was just um, a heavy coat of blue rutile. And you can't even tell that I did that. I'm really happy with how this bowl came out, interestingly enough. It, it as I said, it was a six step process, but it came out exactly as I had intended. And I love the black clay. I love the way the, um, the rim has gone dark as the glazes break over that, that rim. Uh, this is a winner. This is probably gonna be the, the best piece of the load. Okay. Now, these next few layers are just some saucers, and I'm going to take them out pretty quickly. They are, um, these are for um, a girlfriend of mine, and all they are is just like a little three-inch saucer dipped in eggshell. 
and uh, she uses them with um, with glass lanterns. So I have a few rows of these. So bear with me. And then these are the um, the saucers the saucers that I make that go with the lamp so that if people want to use a candle, um, the candle wax won't go on the surface of the table or whatever it is that they put this particular piece on. So um, I always sell those as a set. Always make a tray for these lamps. And um, two lamps and I have two of the saucers. Okay. Now, if I uh, if I had the knowledge and the wherewithal, I probably um, I have a, I have a kiln post that has stuck to my advancer shelf, which um, I'll just knock off when it cools down. I don't want to damage the post. It certainly won't hurt the advancer shelf. That's why I have them. So I have more of more of these saucers. Uh, I'm going to have one more layer of them. There's 36 in all. And in fact, the, my friend who I made these for is coming to visit me this weekend, so I'm really excited. I won't get much done in pottery this weekend because I have house guests. Okay. All right. I don't like probably doing something that I really shouldn't be doing, and that's stacking things. So let me just move these. I don't like to stack things on the rim of my of my kiln. I don't want to damage it. Okay. surprises okay so again I have another one of these bowls I had two clients that asked for them so this is again dipped in the sea spray um, very happy with how that came out but using my glazes on B mix tested tried and true it never disappoints me all right now this um, is a liner. Hang on. So a friend of mine gave me this um, this um, silver serving. Um, I don't know what to call it. Uh, I wish I knew what the right word of it was for, but the liner on the inside of hers broke. So she asked me if I would make a liner. And so I had to do a lot of figuring because there's a little bit of an indentation here in the bottom. And uh, I thought, okay, if I throw it on the wheel, then I have to cut out the little bit and make it oval. And then I thought, no, I'm going to hand build it. So hand build it, I did. So this is now you're going to see live. <laughs> as to whether or not I did a good job. And holy cow, it is perfect. Uh, I had to take into account the shrinkage rate. I had to, uh, I had to take in account that the, the bottom has a little bit of, uh, the bottom of here has a little bit of a groove. So I made a little bit of a groove on the outside rim. So all I did was, uh, I just hand built this. I just cut out the oval in a, on a slab and cut out a long strip and I just wound it around and, and whatever. But, uh, oh my God, um, this is uh, probably technically one of the best pieces I've ever made because it is a perfect fit. Um, there's just enough uh, enough height that the, you still get to see the silver on the inside. I thought of maybe doing one another one for her in cobalt blue because I think cobalt blue and the silver would just go beautiful together. 
but she left the color choice up to me and I chose sea spray. So uh, that is a 100% win. All right, next I have in here, oh God, I hope it doesn't stick, okay. This is um, an ashtray. Um, uh, I made this for a friend of mine. Uh, I really need to try and separate it. So I have this um, this rubber mallet uh, that I use when I um, when I fire two pieces together. They were waxed on the rim and waxed on the inside, but it, it's not giving away easily. So I'm just going to give it a little bit of a tap. Okay, it's not coming apart very easily. Okay, I think I'm gonna have to wait for it to, oh no, it came apart. Okay, great. So the idea is you make the base and it has a cone here for you to stub out your cigarettes. And then you, um, after you stub out your cigarettes, you just lift off the lid. She wanted it purposely done like that. And then you just drop the butt in there and then you put the lid back on and you don't see the, uh, you don't see the ashes. And, uh, and this is a, a, a birthday gift for a girlfriend of mine. And I'll tell you the colors that I use. So it's very similar to um, to the other pieces. So what I did was I just did a full dip into the eggshell. Uh, again, that's gone very brown on the inside, but I don't mind that. I expected it to be a little bit bluer, not quite so brown, but that's okay. Um, and then I painted on some blue rutile on the outside of this, expecting again for the blue to show up, which like these mugs here that you saw earlier in the as I opened the kiln, it did exactly the same thing. So it doesn't have anything to do with the position in my kiln. It is the effect of the of the blue rutile on the 391 clay uh, over, funny enough, eggshell dip. And then what I did on the rim of this was um, I just put a little bit of seaweed because I was hoping to get a little bit of run, uh, run which, which I did get. Uh, again, it's hard for me to show it to you, but you can certainly see a little bit of the green. I like the gloss of it, um, the sheen. This is a, a high gloss glaze. And uh, like I said, putting the two pieces, the two pieces together, this is what you get. Uh, uh, it's, a, it's an ashtray and because we live in Jamaica where it is uh, very windy and the ashes don't get blown all over the place, like I said, you, you, stub out, you stub out your cigarette on this cone that's built in the middle, just lift the lid and drop the butt inside there and then cover it back up. And it probably also helps reduce the smell. But that is, that's a win. Um, these last pieces are, um, now this has turned out more like what I expected. These mugs are, um, Okay, three dips, uh, two, three Monday. Okay, so this is total a total dip in sea spray, which is again the same glaze as this, and you can see how the the um, the dark clay has turned it blue, and now it's on. Look, you're looking at the bottom, sorry, uh, or even the inside. Um, it's the same glaze as this. And then what I did was when that dried, I dip, turned it upside down and I dipped it uh, about two inches into Blue Monday, which is, well, I don't really have a proper showing of Blue Monday. But this is more liking um, what I expected these to turn out like. Uh, I have used um, sea spray on 391 clay before and uh, I got the same result. So this is just something that I can expect um, maybe next time I will try double dipping the sea spray and see if I can get the green to come out a little bit more. But that, I have, um, I have four of those. Here's another one I took out two at the same time. Uh, it's a very slight blend of the Blue Monday into the, into the sea spray. You, you don't really see it and you can't tell, but it's just a little bluer on the top and I'm, I'm happy with those. 
and there's two more. So I made uh, I made ten of these mugs. There's four more. I only have four more pieces to take out. And um, the rim uh, it breaks nicely over the rim, so you get that little bit of brown on the rim. Um, as I said, these turned out pretty much like I expected them. So I'm happy with that. Now the last set of mugs I have are. You guessed it, this is, uh, well, you guessed it. Um, anybody who who's a, a member of um, Clayshare, and uh, you'll certainly recognize this, this, um, this glaze, but this is Jess's Chun, uh, her Chun Blue. And um, I found that the last piece I made, it was really, really thick. So I added a bit of water, and I think I got a slightly better result. Uh, again, with my camera angle, I don't really know if I can show off the blue any better on the inside. Um, but I really like, again, I love to show off the natural clay. And I really love baby blue or soft blue and, uh, and, and black um, or dark brown. It's uh, one of my favorite color combinations from when I was a little girl. And, uh, and that's it. So these ones, these ones came out, out really, really nicely. And there's just two more. So here are, are the other two. Now it comes out very speckled. I'm not really sure why, because it, I don't see those speckles when I glaze. The glaze goes on very evenly and whatever but every time i've used um i've used jess's chun on the on the laguna 391 clay i get that speckle what i have done in the past is i've used slip after i trim it i put some white b mix slip on the inside and i get a more truer result of of um of this glaze and uh but this time i didn't i this is just uh one dip one single dip into the um into just chun blue so uh that's a winner so like i said um well i'm really uh i'm really delighted with how the the liner turned out in this i uh, i couldn't have measured it any better and uh it is just super but uh again the um the pot of the day is this peacock bowl it it has come out so beautiful and uh and i will make more of this one so there you have it i uh i want to thank you all very much for joining me today and uh, spending this last half hour as i unload my kiln uh again um i anticipated how how certain glazes were going to react on my 391 clay and um some disappointed me um, like this, um, this uh, copper, black copper. Uh, it's a beautiful glaze on B mix, um, but I won't use it again on the 391. And um, and again, uh, the blue rutile um, came out pretty dark. And uh, um, uh, yeah, so probably what I should have done is maybe next time is if I'm experimenting and trying to figure out how glazes are gonna react on my 391 is to make the same piece in B mix and make an identical piece in the 391 and glaze them the same way. And then uh, I can do a really good comparison. And I think that's what I'm gonna do next time I use my 391, but it makes a God awful mess in the studio. So I don't pull it out very often but I'm running kind of low on my B-Mix, so I'll probably be using it a little more uh, a little more frequently than I have in the past. Anyway, thank you all very much for joining me today. And uh, if you like this video, please feel free to hit the like button. If not, that's okay too. If you have any comments, good or bad, I'm open to anything. And uh, if you like the channel and haven't already, you're welcome to subscribe. I do primarily uh, glaze unload videos but I am going to start doing a couple of how I throw pieces and they'll just be probably short five minute videos. Um, so it won't take up so much of your time. But thank you for joining me today. I, uh, I look forward to doing more pottery and doing more kiln openings and sharing my experiences and my, um, 
uh, my little bit of knowledge with you in hopes that the, the hits and misses that I've had today will help guide you forward as you make your pottery. So thank you very much for joining me. It's been a pleasure and uh, I will see you next time. So goodbye from Jamaica.